<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's your host for tonight, Crispin Flintoff. Yay. 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 Hello, hello, welcome to uh, Stay Home for Labour. Uh, and I hope you're all staying home and happy and have enough bog roll and hand sanitizer <laughs> if you ever go out of the house. Thank um, you, we've got a fantastic lineup tonight. We've got our baby that back. We've also got um, new people who are coming to perform. But uh, you don't really want to see much more of me, I'm sure. So I'm going to um, start the night with a song uh, from Steve White. Steve, are you there? I am, yes. Um, I, are you up for are you up for this gig? Of course, always. So, um, Steve, uh, do you want to do you want to get the get the ball rolling with a song? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this song is called Bog Roll Billionaire. <laughs> He's got himself to the front of the queue. He's got himself a touch of the flu. He's empty shelves in our oh, number two. He's a bog roll billionaire. He's got a long life milk and sanitizer over a stellar. Most of the cider, he's got no time for a government advisor. He's a bog roll billionaire. And a bog roll billionaire, he'll be okay. Bob Roll Billionaire didn't care much for Elmo's anyway. He said, Charlie, he's at home in my ex council house. When I'm on the throne, I'm a Bob Roll Billionaire. He's got a ton of pasta, a ton of rice. So it's easy job. It ain't very nice. He might let you have one or twice. But he's a Bob Roll Billionaire. He's got frozen cold, he's got frozen place. But just in case, you know he's parted and he's day for the smokes. He's a bog roll billionaire, and a bog roll billionaire is going to be okay. The bog roll billionaire didn't care much for other folks anyway. He says, charity begins at home in my ex council house when I'm on the throne. I'm a bog roll billionaire, he's a bog roll billionaire. Hey. Thank you, Steve. That's a great start to the show. Um, uh, how many bog rolls have you got? Um, well, we, 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 we're shopping from week to week, so only enough. All oh, right. Oh, good answer. I was trying to catch you out there. Um, right, so uh, uh, to, to, to bring a bit of seriousness to the whole thing, um, we, we've got... Uh, a special speaker for tonight um, who's agreed to, to make a speech, uh, Matt Rack from the FBU. Um, would, how are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, thanks, Crispin. How are you? Yeah, good. Uh, so what, t tell us what, what's going on. What, what do you think? I mean, you've been quite active on the ground with, uh, with the FBU. So what, what, what's happening at the moment? Well, we are... Um... It's a big, huge adjustment because obviously our, our members are required to go to work all across the UK uh, as firefighters are all across the world. Uh, and sadly, we've seen firefighters, we've seen two firefighters die in Italy from coronavirus. We've just been told that a firefighter in New Jersey has died of coronavirus uh, overnight. Uh, so we are uh, discussing with our employers, with chief fire officers, what additional roles firefighters might undertake in the face of a coronavirus crisis. Uh, we have uh, clearly an issue of, of uh, how do you maintain our own service uh, when there's a threat to the staffing numbers, for example. So already we've got fire services that are down by 10% or so because of people self-isolating. So there's a question of how you keep the core service going. Uh, and then how can we possibly assist? So we've agreed uh, a, a framework for additional activities. Um, and into that, we've had to build safeguards over health and safety at work, over PPE, and also trying to protect our terms and conditions. Because I think the sad reality is that there are some employers, including in the public sector, including in the fire and rescue service, who will use this opportunity to try and force through changes, uh, taking advantage of people's good nature and the fact people want to help uh, to say, okay, well, we're going to change your working hours, we're going to change your shift systems, um, we're going to potentially change other things. Uh, and while we uh, clearly want to assist all our communities, 
we're also there to protect our members in terms of safety and their terms and conditions. So we've, we've, we've agreed a framework for doing that, which I think does both. It helps communities and protects our members. So that's what, that's what we've been doing um, uh, over the past week or so. And, and what, what's your um, feeling about what, where, how long this will last, do you think? I don't think we, uh, I don't think anyone knows. I mean, it, it, we're preparing as a union. I mean, it's like, like yourselves here, like everyone, we're getting used to operating in different ways. So we, as a trade union, we operate basically on as much as possible, you know, face-to-face -face meetings that might be with our employers, governments, etc. And And obviously with our members, and we can't do that in the current situation. So we've, uh, like everyone else, using new technology, we use we internally we're using Microsoft Teams to have uh, meetings online. We've had our first national executive with a minuted meeting through Microsoft Teams with the votes taken and so on. That's a bit of a historic uh, first for us. Uh, but we're also work, working out how do you organise as a union in these very unusual situations because we still need to speak to our members on fire station across the country to tell them what we're doing on their behalf and for them but also that we, we rely on them to uh, protect themselves to make sure that their employer is complying with national agreements that if they're asked to do things additionally in this crisis that they are getting this, the right uh, protective equipment the right safe procedures uh, and so it, we still have to function as a union, but it's a, in a very, very challenging uh, situation. Uh, and I think, that, I think that's a debate we need to have across the movement. How do we organise? Because what we can't do is sit back and let the people in charge run everything and determine everything. So but I think both in workplaces and in communities, I think this is a, uh, a challenge to us but it's also an opportunity to work and develop new ways of organizing and i think there's lots of we've already learned huge amounts about how we can do things differently uh, and we need to carry on doing that and sharing experiences across the labor movement so this could be quite a positive thing in, in actually building new new networks um with new technology that we didn't have i mean a lot of i mean on, on this show we're, we're meeting people from all over the country at the same time and we could never have done that before so it does have a positive and possibly that could be something we continue to use after things get back to to normal as well yeah i think we do we, we are undoubtedly working in new and different ways and some of those i think we could apply for the long term uh and we will do i think it's equally there's nothing that beats face-to-face -face meeting and discussion with people whether that's in a trade union or politically but clearly people have to take the most out of this situation and learn lessons here but also around the world you know i was on a, a a seminar an international seminar of trade unionists the other day hosted in the united states where we had two thousand people participating from all over the world about how unions can organize in this situation and also as i say make sure that employers and governments don't uh, take advantage of the situation to force through changes that otherwise they may have not been able to to get away with so i think there are huge uh, initiatives fantastic initiatives taking place across the world uh, and we need to be we need to be part of that and i think uh, the labor party and the trade unions in britain really need to uh, have some deep thinking about this and how we get through the crisis how we organize in the crisis but what we do afterwards as well uh, th thanks a lot for for joining us matt it's great to see you. I like your painting as well behind your head. That that's, uh, that's, that's Peter Lou. I thought Peter it was. Lou. I was wondering if it was Peter Lou. I've got Peter Lou and I've also got next to me a very smelly uh, cat. Oh. Oh. There's, oh, not. there's my cat. He's not, he's not very well. He's, never, he's been on well for years and he smells a lot, I'm afraid. So fortunately, it's not smell vision that you're on. So uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, seeing, seeing everyone in their own homes is quite unusual, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank, thanks for joining us. Are you going to stay thank around? For, I'll yeah. stay around for a bit, yeah. All right, cheers, because we've got another um, speaker coming and hopefully at the end, it, it, technology and all that, uh, you know, hopefully that works out. Thanks, Matt. And, and um, I'd just like to move on now, because one of the, one of the um, people who supported this from the start has been um, Libby Barnes uh, from Brighton. Uh, and she, are you there, Libby? Yeah, hi Crispin. Uh, you said you were thrilled to see Matt uh, 
on, on the show, but also it's your birthday today. Yeah. So um, as a special uh, bonus for you, I thought we'd, do, we'd all sing happy birthday to you, but um, simulating what hand washing, that's how, how you're supposed to do it. So we can multitask at the same time. But obviously, don't waste any hand sanitizer you've got at home on this because it's obviously a precious commodity. So, shall we just sing Libby happy birthday quickly? Happy birthday. Thank you. I'll start. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lily. Happy birthday to you. How was that, Libby? Was that good? That was wonderful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die happy that Matt Rapp has sung "Happy Birthday" to me. <laughs> 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 All the rest of you, obviously. <laughs> Well, we, we hope that you have a good rest of your birthday. We've got um, we've got a lot to, to, to go through now because we've also got we've got another Matt um, coming up with Matt and Maria from East London. Is that right, Matt? I'll unmute him. I've unmuted him. Oh, come on, Mark. That's your role, brother. <laughs> I was panicking then. Maria and Matt. It's Maria and Matt. Uh, yes. And you still in, in, in the East End? Yeah, we're in uh, East Ham. East Ham. Yes. Right, so, so uh, how have you been getting on? Because it's quite good that there's two of you together um, to, in the lockdown. It's not like... Uh, two, two poets in a lockdown. So <laughs> are you, are you write, writing a lot of poetry? No. <laughs> no? I, did, I did write a poem today, actually. I wrote a poem today, which I was very proud of. It's hard to get in the zone, you know, with all of this going on. Yeah. I've just been, I've been drunk for about 10 days. <laughs> oh. out of oh. No change there, then. Right. Yeah. We do have a red sofa, though, which is good for tonight. Yeah. We're on brand. On brand, and you've got uh, you've got uh, an all grieve t shirt on there, yeah. So. Shout out, of course, all grieve truth and justice campaign, yeah. And um, it, so it, are you are you up for, for some spoken word? Spoken word, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, because uh, you're both you're both <clears throat> quite highly regarded spoken word performers, so um, you know, which one of you would like to start? Is it alphabetical or left to right? Or? You were going to go first, weren't you, I think? No. Okay. All right, I'll go first. <laughs> uh, it's, got, it's got nothing to do with the coronavirus, but it uh, is in relation to the NHS. The rain beats down on the windows of the car. When you're lost or you're late, it sounds like chaos. But when you're just fine and you're warm and you're comfy, it feels like someone's massaging your scalp with the tips of their nails or the tips of their fingers. Tuesday the 3rd of September, we called by following a routine checkup at the hospital shortly after 2pm. I was upstairs, Lucy answered the door. Silence. Are you alright? she asked. Silence. Matt, you'd better come down, she said, retreating to the kitchen to the kettle. And you looked straight at my chest with those Irish eyes and said, I've got cancer. The world slowly imploded as I took you in my arm and we waited for the click. We sat and talked, passing the diagnosis around the room like a wailing baby, trying to make sense of it and searching for calm. Tuesday the 13th of October. I called by following major surgery at the hospital shortly after 2pm. They called them gates instead of wards, and it does look a bit like an airport, but at least we have the heart to avoid a departure lounge. You moved as though you were standing underwater, spoke with the croak of the young Alex Turner, and as you shuffled towards me, barefoot, in a nightgown, I've never seen anyone looking quite that strong. You all right, Mum? And you looked straight at my chest with those Irish eyes and said, I'll be fine. Thursday, the 10th of December, I called by following a Christmas gig shortly after 10 pm. We're to dash via Agbrig, I'd forgotten my passport, and then over the M62 to the PO port at Liverpool. With my phone drained of battery, Satnav took us to the wrong end of the right port in complete darkness at 2 am. 
We tried asking a bloke by a lorry, but he was a urinating unilingual Latvian. A frantic driver around Bootle, rescued by the woman in the all-night garage. Terror, and then tears, and then panic, and then relief. The rain beats down on the windows of a car. When you're lost or you're late, it sounds like chaos, but when you're just fine and you're warm and you're comfy, it feels like someone's massaging your scalp with the tips of their nails on the tips of their fingers. One by one, the cars filter up the ramp. The rain gives way to echoes of engine noise, waved on by conductors in high-vis jackets. They feed us fish and chips before bidding us goodnight. At lights out, I suck on an IPA and try reading Bukowski by the light from the fridge, but at this stage, it just makes me feel tired and inferior. Instead, I sit watching you, drifting off to sleep, your purple coat for a duvet, a pillow from reception, peaceful as ever. When we wake, we'll be in Dublin, where Irish eyes are smiling. God bless the NHS. <laughs> So, um, um, Maria. Yes. Are, are, are you are you up for following that? Oh. Am I up for following that? that? <laughs> put, I, I missed. I lost you there for one second. But yeah, I am up for following that. Did you notice how we sort of argued for the headline slot in our own living room? Yeah. <laughs> You've got an opener and a closer. They're both equally good spots, aren't they? If there were three of you, it'd be a different matter. Oh yeah, very true. This is the third of our That's family. The third one, yeah. This is Chi Chi, our panda. After you. Um, I'm going to read just a very short poem. It's from my new collection that's just come out. It's called All Right Girl. It came out um, in March, so that was good timing. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to read something that was... Um, about sort of the, the small miracles in life. Because as we're having, you know, such a unprecedented uh, time at the moment, I feel like uh, we should concentrate on the things that um, make us happy, the small things in everyday life. So it's uh, a <coughs> miracle. I woke up and it was a miracle. I had nowhere to be, but I got out of bed and that, in itself was a miracle. The tea I made was a miracle. And how I left you sleeping because you looked so peaceful. And the clothes on the floor and the wine still in the bottle, that was definitely a miracle. The cat purring was a miracle. The noise from the builders next door, butter mm -hmm. melting on white toast. The toast on my tongue was a miracle. I dressed in front of the mirror and it was a miracle. I took time to look at myself, ran my fingers over my body, my face, my hair, and thought it was beautiful. I smiled and it was a miracle to see myself smile back. Oh. Wow. Wow. I just say just say that we we we've done stand up for labor shows with both of you and you've both been like one of the top acts that we've that have ever performed. I remember especially the gig in Colchester. Uh, Essex massive. Amazing. Yeah, that was that was one of the best gigs I've ever done. Oh, thank you for the for the mutual plugging. <laughs> uh, so, okay. th thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I hope, I hope you can you stay for the rest of it. Yeah, of yeah, course. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because we, hopefully Thank we've you. got a special guest coming at the end. Uh, so, um, and and also I'd like to at this time just to introduce again our our two our three co-hosts that we have tonight. We've got uh, Wendy, who's doing the un the unmuting. Are you there, Wendy? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Wendy, Wendy from Newark. CLP, is it? Is it? Are you enjoying your, your week so far? Yes, all good. I got a little bit overexcited today about the surprise guests and the number of people who were registering. So I dropped a messy lunch onto my keyboard, <laughs> and I've calmed down now. Had lunch. I was excited. Was what was the lunch? Was it? It was hot 
sausage and tomato sauce on a bagel, oh. which I dropped onto my keyboard. So I thought I'd kill my laptop and it was all over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened, but I'm, I'm pleased that you're, you're able to still use your keyboard, obviously, now. And, and there we've got Alison, who's, who's from Windsor CLP, who's, who's done the Britney Spears sort of, um, <laughs> any, any thing. Hi, uh, everyone. And, and she's doing the uh, wait. She's sorted out the waiting room. And there's Mark from Workington CLP. Uh, is that is that working? How are you doing? Top, rugby top. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, I, I probably it's a it's a the love is equal with the Labour Party between working in town and the Labour Party. And you and you and your role in this is to is to keep the chat going in the chat room. So if anyone's uh, bored by what they're seeing, they can always have a little chat with people on the chat. Bit there so uh, Mark sorting that out uh, and we've got um, we've I've just saw Boris on the bog is that you Boris yes yes Crispin I'm here good evening everybody uh, how, how have you been getting on Boris have you been um, you, you've been in, in self-isolation haven't you for the last yes. few days splendid self-isolation as you can see folks Boris on the bog giving it to you straight so, so let me tell you day eight in self-isolation folks what have i been doing i've been i've been addressing all these envelopes and licking them and sticking them because i'm sending a letter for every one of you across the country <laughs> <laughs> you're looking forward to that aren't you ah, april fool <laughs> don't worry Dominic coming doing that right so somebody said to me the other day you know these restrictions crispin on people um for instance, you can't go to the barbers for three months. I mean, how awful is that? Well, I said, it's not awful, because after three months, you'll all look like me. See? <laughs> Isn't that the answer? Yes. A Britain full of Boris Barnets. That's what we'll be uh, looking <laughs> like when we come out of this, when we come out at the other end, folks, here in my uh, bathroom at home. Okay, so let me tell you about consistency. And I think consistency is very important at this time. Uh, for the British people. Okay, so I said, Crispin, I said, you yeah. know, I said, yes, it's all right for you to go in the park. Except, no, it isn't. I said, yes, it's fine to, for me to go around hospitals shaking hands with patients and uh, uh, doctors, except uh, maybe that uh, wasn't a good idea at the end. But, um, but at least I am still consistent. Consistently inconsistent. That's the forest <laughs> way. Thank you, folks. That's what you want to hear, isn't it? Okay. I've got another one for you. Some of you may have seen on the uh, on the uh, Twitter theme thing that uh, perhaps I made a faux pas this morning, folks. A faux pas when I tweeted that I had one of these sort of setups with the uh, cabinet and left the uh, code in the top corner, the top corner of the screen, saying that uh, ah, you too can join in with the cabinet discussion. Well, that's another April Fool. <laughs> I actually did it. Uh, Bit about faux pas, but I'll tell you why I did it. Crispin, I'll tell you for why. I'll tell you why, folks. Because since my Damascene conversion in the last few weeks with public spending, joining the Labour Party and moving everything to the left, I've realised it's we've got to bring some of the stay home with Labour into the cabinet. And I can tell you it's a, it's a lot more fun sitting here looking at you, Crispin, looking at uh, Dorothy, Mark up there, James, iPhone, and even Dom, Dom in the middle there. And it is looking at pretty Patel and Michael Gurney. By oh, Christ, it's anything be better than that. But um, let me just say, if you are out and about and you do come across Alex Salmon, please, please stay well clear. At least four meters with him. And, uh, <laughs> yes, well, yeah, well, thank you've obviously been too close. Boris, thank you, Boris. We, we don't want a libel. We don't want any libel cases. Uh, <laughs> Uh, on on the back He's of not coming on, is he? Uh, uh, you've said quite enough. You've said quite enough there, boys. Um, <laughs> I've got something anyway, but, to tell you. Maybe uh, get well. Get well soon. Get well soon. Uh, we, Thank you very much. Indeed. We all wish you. We all wish you well. Uh, and um, and we is Patrick there? Patrick, you there? Patrick's there. Yeah, he's on page two. Page two. With... Hey, Patrick. Oh, I'm it there. Can you hear me? Are you guys? Are you all doing all right? Yeah, good. Thank you got your dog there as well. 
Happy birthday to Lydia. Do you know what we can do? If you want to, I'll do a house party up. I don't know if anyone's done that. Can, have you anyone done that? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I've got a dog. Is that a so we can do a house party up, which is basically straight after this, we can celebrate uh, Libby and Jan's birthday. Yeah. You're allowed to do it. You're allowed to, it's, it's said that you're allowed to, um, you have to social distance except for parties and for private, private events like this. So we should be all right if you want to do that. What are you doing to that dog, Patrick? What's that for? Are you doing to that you dog? Pablo! Yeah, just come so. Can you see him? Oh. <laughs> That's Pablo. So basically, he was a bald eagle before lockdown, and then he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Rumours. Which is actually quite interesting because Boris was talking about the haircut, and I literally forgot to get my haircut as well before. Well, to you, it's going to be a lockdown. So basically, what I did was I went on to YouTube, and this is a tip for everyone, everyone out there. Listen, YouTube is unbelievable. I didn't realise. You know, Crispin, they've got tutorials for everything. You can make a plane if you want. You can, you can make, make your own dog. You can everything except for a dog. <laughs> right. You can do everything. So I went on. Have you have you ever cut your own hair, Crispin? No, I need to though. No, it's looking it's good. good. How does it always stay that length? No, no, I don't know about that. Well, well, basically, dead easy. I don't know if anyone... Has anyone here cut their own hair? Has anyone done that yet? I don't think anyone has. Okay, well, basically, if you haven't, basically what you do, Susie, Susie looks at... Susie goes professional hair dressers. If you cut your own hair, basically what it says, I watched this tutor, uh, tutorial, and it basically said it's dead simple. The guy comes on, he goes, dead simple, all you need is some scissors, and, um, and, and all you need is a comb. Uh, but then the other thing they forget to leave, you need 22 years experience of cutting hair. And he's my hair's like this. I'm watching this bloke who's like one of the best hairdressers in the world and he's just going, oh yeah, he's like talking as if he's making a cup of tea. And he's going, all you need is, now make sure the scissors are hairdresser scissors and not normal scissors. And I was thinking, who's got, no, who's got hairdresser scissors? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I've literally been cutting my hair. I haven't even got scissors. I've been cutting my hair with a bread knife for like the last. Just try to cut my hair with the clippers and stuff. And then, um, and then I got lost in a. And this is a term I didn't realise this, but apparently it's a well-known term. If you're on YouTube, you know when you're looking at your tutorials, or whatever. It's called you go down a black hole. Have you heard this, Crispin? Before we go down a, a hole. So then I literally started watching about three thousand different YouTube tutorials on different ways to cut your hair, not just your head hair, your chest hair. I haven't even, I really, it looks like I've got chest hair, but I haven't. <laughs> I had to take hair off our dog, stick it on my chest so that I could start shaving my chest hair because it looked great. And then, and then I thought, do you know what? Last thing I'll quickly tell you this. I thought, do you know what? Because there's, we're going to be here for a month, maybe, you know, weeks, months, whatever. And I thought, look on the positive side of it. And this is one of the great things we're all doing here tonight, every week, we're communicating, we're chatting with each other. But I thought, let's not focus on negative news, let's look at the positive ones. One of the biggest positive stories this week, I don't know if you heard it, Crispin, you know what one of the biggest positive things was? What, you know what it was? No, I'll tell you. Lots of industries, our industries are all shutting down at the moment, you know, live entertainment, whatever. You know, a lot of industries are shutting. The biggest industries, though, in the UK, you can Google this, was um, the biggest sales so far are for bikes, push bikes, for garden furniture, for alcohol, right, and for board games. And I thought that is amazing. That is that showing that, you know, through all this blitz spirit, people... They're getting hammered. We're buying garden furniture. We bought. I bought like I bought a big patio deck chair. I put them on the front of the, the front of the pavement. I'm just you know people the people walking past. Me. And, it's, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think this is the spirit that we've got to do. Board games are up. People are communicating with each other. Actually talking with each other. And I think that's one of the. <laughs> And then we've got the push bikes because after we've been drinking all night in the morning, you can cycle down to the off license again just to try and sober up again, and then you can start a day again. So it's absolutely fantastic. It's like a full circle, circle of life. Here. So I'm just trying to keep it positive. Yeah, you, you, you're always positive, Patrick. It's, it's, that's why you're that's why you're on this show because you're, you're always positive. 
and that's and that's also why Susie's on the on the show. Yeah. Susie, are you there? Hello. Uh, what have you been Hi. up? To? Are you still with your, you're in lockdown with your mum, aren't you? Yes, um, I'm in I'm in my boudoir. This is my bedroom with the showbiz curtains. Um, <laughs> yeah, me and my mum, we get on really well, so that's a plus. But um, we've been trying to find things to do to occupy ourselves. We've been doing arts and crafts. Um, and by that, I mean we've been braiding our leg hairs. Because uh, let's face it, we've got to tonight but i haven't put deodorant on and i've got pajamas on the bottom of me um but um yeah i, I do you know patrick raises a good point because people aren't really grooming like they used to and i as some people know i'm a i've got a penchant for large men with beards you know after this i'm gonna i'm gonna be cleaning up aren't i because everyone's gonna be eating and not shaving and um <laughs> but, I've, but i've got a top tip um Oh, do you know, I've been enjoying looking in everyone's homes and loving your artwork there, Patrick. And I've got my got a Columbo picture behind me. But I, can't <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to it's give you look. some of my merch every time because the first day we have my Columbo pants and then we have my Columbo t shirt. So I'll give you Columbo's eyes. Ooh. This is my. <laughs> Next time I'll show you the painting, but this is my brother did this for me, bless. So Columbo's always watching. Um, but uh, yeah, some top tips. Um, I um, I realised that everyone's been sitting at home and, and sitting around in their pajamas, and not everyone's lucky enough to have a slanket. Do you know what a slanket is? No. It's, it's the blanket with sleeves. You must have seen one. Yeah. It's yeah. a blanket with oh, sleeves in it. It's amazing. It looks like a hospital gown. It doesn't do up at the back. So if you do pop to pop out for your morning walk, just make sure you do it up. But if you haven't got one, all you have to do is put your dressing gown on backwards like this. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's got a little hood, which makes a handy snack pouch. <laughs> <laughs> Popcorn in there and just sit there and uh, watch your one Corrie and your one Emmerdale, because we've been rationed on Corrie and Emmerdale. Like, yesterday there was no Emmerdale, and I just sat and stared at the wall for half an hour, uh, thinking about my life. Um, but to uh, say about my mum, um, we've been watching a lot of daytime telly, and um, Davina McCall was on this morning and um, I love looking behind at everyone's furniture and, and I was a little bit anxious because her third drawer down was slightly out. So I have tweeted her to sort it out because it's causing her anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> because she's at home with children and she said to stop the children overeating and snacking all the time you should do a tuck shop every day so she get, puts it on her blackboard and she gives everything a price and she'll give the child sort of pocket money for the day and so if they want a packet of crisps they've got to spend the money and um, my mum's decided to take this on board and she gives me one pound a day and she's priced up a pepper army at 90p so I'm a little bit gutted about that to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but she did write me a note to get me out of Joe, Joe Wick's PE so uh, thanks mum uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this is really nice i got a bit emotional with the poems that was really lovely it's nice to you know think about the positives and count your blessings and stuff so i'm a lot better off than a lot of people and uh you know god bless the nhs we all all there and clapped for them the other day and uh, my local asda is my saving grace but apparently goose bridging is not an essential item who knew so um <laughs> that's the most middle class thing i've ever said goose bridging <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. um, yeah, I am doing all right. I, I, I mean, Roots will be showing soon, Patrick, but I'm not sure I'm going to attempt it myself. I'm going to go ombre. That's what we call it. Um, but yeah, I lo I'm loving this. This is a really nice, positive thing to do of an evening. And uh, I can watch Corrie on catch up tonight. So, you know, live the dream. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. to see you all. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, John, you're, you've been, you've been uh, busy. You, you, been busy this week have you done uh, yeah uh, I'd just like to start tonight with an apology Crispin uh, as a topical comedian my joke about ventilators is not ready yet <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> apologies sir. also uh, I have been busy uh, I still live with my overbearing Indian mother so I've been in lockdown for 37 fucking years <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been too busy, but uh, I feel a bit depressed because I haven't had a physical gig for two months. In fact, the only way I can get a round of applause now is if I leave my house dressed as a paramedic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, what I've noticed, obviously, the obvious thing is that because of the coronavirus, uh, society is slowing down. Even the government's response to it, so. 
which is not great. Um, but I've got some good news, Chris, and this is what I've been up to. I've got a dinner party tomorrow. All right. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Uh, well, the sad thing is, it's a dinner party. Unfortunately, the only one who's going to drive to my house is Stephen Kinnock. So. <laughs> There's a dinner party for one, so his dad might come as well, but two metres apart, you know, so... um for coming over to your dinner party. I want to make a serious point here. The reason, we said about the Labour government, and the reason why the government are being so slow is four years ago, they could have had ventilators and they didn't bother because of austerity. Now, austerity has affected me as well. Because of police cutbacks, as a brown guy living in South London, I now search myself. You have to what? I can search myself. You have to stop the search. <laughs> and just uh, um, the signal went a bit there, Don. That ruined your punchline. But look, look we better move on because I've just. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen that there's someone um, in the in the room that's uh, that's remarkable. Um, it, it's Wendy. it's the Labour Party <laughs> leader. Jeremy Corbyn. How, how are you doing, Jeremy? Can you hear me? Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, we're, we're good. We're just, we're, we're, well, we're just, um, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here at home. <coughs> got I've got company, of, though. You've got lots of CDs there. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh. 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 El Gato. Oh. 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 Cat. Oh, this cat. Oh. Well, he's got the has got mixed feelings about being at home all day, actually. Because by about 11 o'clock, he sort of looks at you and says, uh, Haven't you got anywhere to go? <laughs> <laughs> time, isn't it time you went off somewhere? Uh, so we've just come back from our evening exercise, and um, I've been on, on, on Zoom calls all day. The history of the coronavirus is going to be one long Zoom call. I've got about three today already on lots of things, but we've been basically um, bashing the government on the lack of testing because it is quite shocking that uh, there are 500,000 people who work in the NHS and social care and uh, they say that 2,000 people have now been tested. Well, what about the rest? It is absurd and uh, we are challenging that all the time and uh, we have a, a daily uh, mm -hmm. coronavirus um, call and work out who's going to say what on the media and who's going to do what and it's going well in that sense that pressure but this is this whole thing is a product of 10 years of austerity 10 years of cuts 10 years of frozen wages and uh, 10 years of treating people that do very important jobs like cleaning like they don't care and they don't matter well, they do, and I think this is what's been shown. And that's what I said last week in Prime Minister's Question Time. Who do we need more? A hedge fund manager or a cleaner? I said that last week. With coronavirus. Cleaner. Yeah. Should we do a, a quiz on that, Crispin, and sort of offer a prize? <laughs> got, have you got any jam left that you could offer? Yeah, we've got jam. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of jam. The thing is, it's a bit early in the year to be making jam because the fruit hasn't grown yet. Just saying. Well, no, <laughs> you've been, you been stockpiling jam is what I'm saying. Jam. Well, I've got jam, of course. I've got jam I've been making for a long time. Is this some kind of inquisition? No, no, I just wanted to do the prize. We don't want to oh, take the prize. Oh, I see. Okay, no. Sorry, I thought you were sort of in. Uh, I thought it was a sort of um, local watch committee going around to check what the supplies of jam were in the neighbourhood. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not into no, no, that. We've got a supply of jam, we're fine, and I'd be delighted to give a jar of jam as a prize. No problem. And in case anybody gets too upset, this is Youth UK, this T-shirt. Because I saw the things going across the bottom of the screen, which um, slightly worried me, because I don't use that kind of language. No. Uh, <laughs> can, can, I, can, can I just say that uh, we... We all signed up. We were all really thrilled when you said that you'd be part of this uh, this show today, and also that you have been one of the most inspiring politicians in my lifetime. Yeah. And also that we're going to miss you as Labour leader greatly. <coughs> and 
we have here one of the audience members, um, Isaac, would like Hello. to speak to you. Are you there, Isaac? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you signed this uh, for me uh, in Newport when I was doing some campaigning down there, and I've just got a couple of words I've got to say. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for inspiring me to believe in change. Change will come, thanks to you. And yes, it will be a fight, but I know we can do it. If you can fight for four years of hell, we can keep this vision alive. Thank you for what you have done and continue to do. The kind of hope and vision you've inspired won't won't belong. Uh, yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm just lost my words a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of hope and vision you've inspired won't be lost in me or anyone else. Hopefully, your inspiration will change the me society we live in to a we, so um, we society instead. You have shown me I am not alone in seeing the ways things we are now living in is unfair and unjust. You may not have been on the winning side, but you were on the right side which is the winning side to me. So thank you and enjoy your time on the back benches, but don't leave us totally. Uh, <laughs> Isaac, um, <laughs> Isaac, thank you so much for that. That's, I'm really touched by that. And it was great seeing you in Newport at that time. Um, yes, I'm not gonna be leader of the party from Saturday, but I'm not disappearing. I'm going to be around. I'm very proud to be the MP for my constituency where I live. And I'm going to be campaigning on peace, justice, human rights, anti-austerity, and all the things I've always campaigned on. And will continue to do so. Because what we have done in the past almost five years is change the economic debate in this country. I was condemned in the uh, end of November during the general election campaign by all of the media saying our program was too expensive, it was too, too much money, couldn't, couldn't possibly be afforded. Only three months later, the government, because it has to deal with the coronavirus crisis, is investing very large amounts of money in public services because they've been so grotesquely underfunded. Just imagine we hadn't had 10 years of austerity. Instead, we'd had proper provision of testing kits, we'd had properly paid staff, we'd had a fully funded and fully staffed NHS, we'd be in a much better position to deal with this crisis. So one big, big lesson from all of this is people and communities matter and we only survive when each other survives. We only prosper when everybody prospers. If we live in a world where we bow down before the rich and ignore the poor, it's a horrible, horrible place. If we live in a world where we care for each other, care for our planet, our environment, and the hopes of every young person like Isaac, then we're in a much better position. And our party and our movement, I hope, will always have that at the absolute core of what we do in our values. We do it in different ways. You do it on Zoom calls, you do it on Skype, you do it on chatting to each other. And tomorrow night, we're gonna be out ringing bells for the NHS. The NHS was our achievement. It was an achievement of a movement that believe people had a right to health care and it should never be just a privilege. And I think that message has got home more than anything over the past few weeks. And so these next few weeks are going to be very difficult and we're going to keep bashing the government on the need for more support for the self-employed, more support for those people that are uh, being furloughed and not being paid properly and all those care workers that are putting themselves at the at risk because of all this and all those NHS staff that are going in knowing full well they're putting themselves in a place of danger. That's what real heroism is. The people that will get us through this crisis are not those that promoted austerity and underfunded it. They are the care workers, the cleaners, the nurses, the doctors, they're the people that are going to get us through this. So let's say well done to all of them. And as I just say this, in your own communities, there are people that are very lonely and families that are living in very crowded places. Now you've obviously got to be careful that you don't 
um, go around spreading CV by mistake. But we do have to support the food banks, support the food delivery, and make sure there is some system by calls, email, or whatever, of keeping in touch with people that are on their own, because many people get very isolated and quite frightened. But you can also get together, as you're doing now on the call, discuss what you've been doing today. What, what kind of exercise you did, what work you did, what books you read. I'll tell you what book I was reading. Do you want to know, Crispin? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading this last night. William Cuffey. He was um, a former slave who, um, no, his family were former slaves, and he was um, born in Chatham in England, a black man from the Caribbean who became one of the leading chartists in the great uprising of the 1850s and ended up being deported to Australia because of his participation in the, in the Chartist marches and petitions, and then became active in politics in Tasmania, and eventually came back to Britain where he, he finally died. And he was one whose family had come from slavery, come from all of the horrors of that, yet wanted the Chartists to succeed so that we could have democracy within our society. Fascinating man, and this is the kind of bits and pieces of history that it's very important for us all to read, to understand the sacrifices people made that we might be able to take, take it all a stage further and bring about that much more socially just society. And, and, and I'd say that um, your, your story of how you've been in the last four years has inspired loads of people to think that they can stick their neck out and actually speak up for what's right and what's not and what's wrong and to actually participate in politics again. So, so many people have joined the party because of your energy that you brought into the Labour Party, and we want to keep that going. So what I have to ask you, Jeremy, is, that, is will you do any more of these shows so we can um, get more people to come and watch? Because they don't really want to watch me with my red sequin jacket. As much <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I think you're, you're understanding your sequin jacket, actually. I think it's quite a splendid sequin jacket. Yes, of course, I'm delighted to do these calls and delighted to come on. Indeed, if you want, I'll wear a green jacket next time or something like that. <laughs> that well, the help is to ring the changes a bit. Yeah, well, and, that, um, that might brighten up people's day a little bit. So we, we, we'll, we'll, we've, we've, we've got to move on because we've got a, a, a set time on this and I don't want to overrun, but I'm sure everyone would love to hear more from Jeremy. But as Jeremy has said, he'll come back with a green jacket. We can all look forward to that. Um, and to lead us out tonight, um, we've got um, Steve Gribbin with a song. Woo! Well, I get El Gato to sing as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? This is the new theme. This is the new theme tune for Stay Home for Labour. Isolate solidarity. Get together on to see it too. We're all boys free. Stay home for Labour. Wave your toilet ball in the air. We'll play. I have a sop, keep your spirits up, that's when it's over. We've got some asses to kick. Fantastic. <laughs> hey. Hey. We'll, get that on, we'll get that on a better reception next time, probably. Oh, right, okay. And can I can I thank everyone who's who's been part of this, who's helped uh, with this, the co-hosts and the, the performers and Matt Rack and Jeremy. And if you'd like to help donate towards uh, more shows, please um, do the, follow the link that uh, has been put down in the chat section. And we'll be back on Saturday with another show that will be just as amazing, only that um, but we don't know who the guests will be, and um, and can we all can we all now thank Jeremy for being the most fantastic Labour leader we've had in Ever. our lifetimes. Ever. Hey. Hey. Thank you, everybody. Hey. Hey. Thanks, Kristen. Hey.
We'll do the call on Saturday and uh, well done on your work and I'll make a donation to help keep these um, um, Stay In For Labour shows going because I think it's a really great idea. Well done you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night everyone. Good night Chris. Good night, Good night everybody. Bye. Thanks for your kindness. Bye. Well done. And Elgato too. <laughs>